Number 7. The Knocking from the Void In 1961, Yuri Gagarin became the first human to orbit Earth. For 108 minutes, he floated above the world in Vostok 1, a tiny metal sphere barely larger than a phone booth. But during that historic flight, something happened that he couldn't explain. He heard knocking. Clear, deliberate knocking on the hull of his spacecraft. It wasn't random metallic creaking or the sound of equipment shifting. It was rhythmic, patterned, like someone tapping from the outside. Gagarin immediately reported it to Soviet ground control. Engineers told him it was thermal expansion, the metal contracting in the freezing vacuum of space. But Gagarin insisted that wasn't it. It sounded like someone knocking from outside, he said during his debriefing, like a code. Here's the problem. In space, sound doesn't travel. There's no air to carry vibrations, no wind, no atmosphere, nothing. Yet Gagarin heard it, and he wasn't alone. Decades later, Chinese astronaut Yang Li Wei reported the exact same phenomenon aboard Shenzhou 5 in 2003. He described it as someone knocking on the body of the spaceship, just as someone knocking on an iron bucket with a wooden hammer. When Yang returned to Earth, engineers tried everything to recreate the sound. They hit every part of the spacecraft with tools, testing different metals, different temperatures. None of their attempts matched what he heard. The knocking remains unexplained. Imagine floating 200 miles above Earth, completely alone, and hearing something knock. Not from inside, but from outside. There's nothing out there. Yet, something knocked. And it knocked with purpose. Number 6. The Fireflies of John Glenn February 20, 1962 John Glenn was completing America's first orbital spaceflight aboard Friendship 7. As he entered his second orbit, sunrise broke across the horizon. That's when he saw them, thousands of tiny glowing particles surrounding his spacecraft. They looked like fireflies, shimmering in the sunlight, dancing around him in slow, graceful swirls. I am in a big mass of some very small particles that are brilliantly lit up like they're luminescent, Glenn radioed to Mission Control. He tried tapping the wall and the particles reacted, swirling faster, moving toward him as if responding to the vibration. NASA quickly labeled them as ice crystals from the spacecraft's cooling system, reflecting sunlight. But Glenn noticed something strange. The particles didn't just drift randomly, they moved with intention. They clustered, they swirled, they seemed to follow the spacecraft. Years later, Glenn said in an interview, I'm not entirely convinced we know what they were. Other astronauts reported the same phenomenon on later missions. Scott Carpenter saw them during Aurora 7. So did Russian cosmonauts. Each time, the particles behaved the same way, glowing, pulsing, reacting to movement. Whatever they are, they're still out there, floating in the dark, glowing softly, waiting for the next spacecraft to pass by. Number 5. The Tether UFO Swarm In February 1996, NASA launched Space Shuttle Columbia for mission STS-75. The goal was to test a 12-mile-long electrodynamic tether that could generate electricity by dragging through Earth's magnetic field. The experiment worked perfectly. Until it didn't, midway through deployment, the tether snapped and drifted away into the blackness of space. But then something appeared on NASA's live camera feed. Dozens of glowing disc-shaped objects, pulsating with light, moving in formation around the broken tether. Then more appeared, hundreds of them. They were semi-transparent with a strange notch on one side, and they moved deliberately, not like debris, but like something alive. NASA immediately explained them as ice particles close to the camera lens reflecting sunlight. But when independent researchers analyzed the footage, they noticed something disturbing. Many of these objects appeared to pass behind the 12-mile tether, meaning they were enormous, miles wide, and far away from the camera. Even stranger, their movement didn't match physics. Some accelerated. Some changed direction mid-flight. One appeared to dodge a beam of light. Astronaut Story Musgrave, who was on the mission, later said in an interview, There are things out there we simply don't understand yet. The footage is still online. Once you watch it, you can't unsee it. It doesn't look like ice. It doesn't look like debris. It looks like a swarm. Coordinated, intelligent, watching. Number 4. 
The Space Angels of Salyut 7. Of all the strange events reported in orbit, this one might be the most surreal. In July 1984, six Soviet cosmonauts aboard the Salyut 7 space station were nearing the end of a grueling repair mission. They were exhausted, drained, counting the days until they could go home. Then, without warning, the station filled with a blinding orange light. The cosmonauts rushed to the windows. Outside, floating alongside the spacecraft, were seven enormous figures. They looked human, but luminous, glowing with soft golden light. Each one had massive wings, stretching for miles. Their faces were calm, peaceful, almost smiling. The figures drifted alongside the station for nearly 10 minutes before slowly fading away. All six crew members saw them. All six described them the same way. Angels, they said. We saw angels. Soviet officials immediately classified the report, blaming it on psychological stress and sleep deprivation. But the cosmonauts never changed their story. One later said, They weren't threatening. They were welcoming. We were in full control of our minds. What we saw was real. Scientists have suggested it was sunlight refracting through ice crystals, creating an optical illusion. But that doesn't explain why all six men saw the same thing, at the same time, with the same details. Maybe it was illusion. Maybe it was something else. But for those six men, floating hundreds of miles above Earth, it was a moment of grace. Number 3. The Music of Apollo 10 May 1969, two months before Neil Armstrong walked on the moon, Apollo 10 was orbiting the lunar surface, scouting landing sites. As the spacecraft passed behind the moon, it lost all contact with Earth. For nearly an hour, the astronauts were completely alone, cut off from mission control, flying through absolute silence. Then they heard it. Music. It sounds like outer space type music, astronaut Eugene Cernan said over the intercom. The sound was strange, eerie, almost melodic, high-pitched whistling tones rising and falling in patterns that didn't sound random. It wasn't static, it wasn't interference, it was music. The crew listened in stunned silence. They recorded it, debated whether to report it, and ultimately decided to keep it quiet. NASA kept the recordings classified for nearly 40 years. When they were finally released in 2008, engineers explained it as radio interference between the lunar module and the command module. But the astronauts weren't convinced. The sounds were rhythmic, repeating, almost like a signal. Imagine being the only three humans on the far side of the moon, cut off from Earth, and hearing music echo through your headset. Music with no source. Number 2. Buzz Aldrin's Monolith Buzz Aldrin, the second man to walk on the moon, is not someone who believes in conspiracy theories. He's a scientist, an engineer, a man who spent his life dealing in facts. So when he went on live TV in 2009 and talked about a monolith on Mars, people listened. He said, there's a monolith there, a very unusual structure on this little potato-shaped object that goes around Mars once every seven hours. When people find out about that, they're going to say, who put that there? The object is located on Phobos, one of Mars's two moons. Photos from the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter show it clearly, a tall rectangular structure standing perfectly upright, casting a long shadow across the barren surface. NASA explained it as a large boulder, the result of natural geological processes, but its shape is too perfect, too rectangular, too deliberate. Aldrin called for a manned mission to investigate it. He said, the universe put it there, or maybe we should visit it and find out who did. Number 1. The Black Knight Satellite For over 60 years, amateur radio operators and astronauts have reported detecting a mysterious object orbiting Earth in a polar orbit. It's been nicknamed the Black Knight Satellite. In 1998, during the STS-88 mission, astronauts photographed a strange, dark object floating near the International Space Station. The object appeared to be artificial, angular, metallic, and unlike any known spacecraft or debris. NASA claimed it was a thermal blanket that had come loose during a spacewalk. But the photographs show an object far too large and structured to be a simple piece of fabric. 
Some researchers believe the Black Knight has been in orbit for over 13,000 years based on strange radio signals detected in the 1960s by Norwegian researchers. The signals seem to be coming from an unknown source in space, repeating in patterns that didn't match any known satellite. Others think it's extraterrestrial surveillance technology, quietly watching humanity from above. While mainstream science dismisses it as space junk, the mystery endures. Because if it really is just debris, why has it been orbiting in the same path for decades? Why do the radio signals continue? And why does it appear in photos from multiple space missions, always the same shape, always watching? Thank you for watching and sticking till the end. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss our next deep dive into the unknown. See you in the next one.